I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Python playlist, and we're going to look at how to use Python on Azure SQL, specifically how to create a stored procedure on Azure SQL, uh, but also how to execute a stored procedure and retrieve the value uh, from that. And as an added bonus, we're going to do an insert procedure where there's an identity column uh, on our table, a synthetic key, and we're going to grab the value uh, from that uh, synthetic column so that we can return it to our Python code uh, so we know the ID value of the newly created record. So without further ado, let's get to our uh, Python on Azure SQL. Looking for more programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the links in the description. Okay, so I'm starting with the uh, default uh, Python installation from python.org and I've added PyODBC and pandas uh, to it using uh, pip install. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import uh, PyODBC as pyo and, uh, and then I'm going to import pandas as pd. And, uh, and then we're going to go through an exercise of uh, creating uh, a connection to Azure SQL using SQL Server Driver 17 for SQL Server. And then we're going to create a stored procedure and we're going to execute that stored procedure. And we're also going to retrieve some values uh, from the, the running stored procedure. In this case, the auto-generated ID value uh, for the synthetic key. So I'm going to create a variable here. I'm just going to call it uh, ODBC uh, driver. And in this case, I'm going to use the uh, ODBC driver 17 for SQL server. Um, in my previous videos, I've used the sort of stock SQL server driver. I've used uh, driver 13, and now I'm using driver 17. And they all have different um, sort of capabilities and features. Um, and this, for this demonstration, you could probably use the uh, use the stock driver, um, but uh, I like to use the newer one uh, when I can. So, uh, first things first, I'm gonna uh, give some feedback saying I'm opening the database, and then I'm going to uh, create a connection string for Azure, uh, CNN underscore Azure, and I'll put an R in front of there. I can't remember if there's any special characters. If you have any backslashes or anything, uh, it's good to put those, put the R in front of your uh, your string there, so those will get uh, literally uh, put into your string. And I'm going to build our string. I'm just going to say driver equals, and then the curly braces, I'll put our ODBC driver in there, uh, concatenated, and uh, uh, then I'll put in our, our server name. In this case, it's a uh, access demo server uh, that I created on Azure. And uh, you can see uh, some other operations on that using Microsoft Access in, in another video that I did. But today we're going to just use the uh, tables and we're going to create a store procedure in there. So it's uh, access demo server .database .windows .net. You might have a, you'll, well, of course, you'll have a different name for yours. And uh, uh, each of those. Uh, uh, value uh, key value pairs are separated by a semicolon and so uh, make sure that you don't forget one of those. The database I'm using is called uh, Project Timesheets um, that we used in another episode and uh, so it's a simple little Project Timesheets database. Uh, it doesn't really have much in it uh, but we're going to create a store procedure in that database to uh, insert a new person into the person table. And so uh, you'll include your uh, user ID and uh, your password. And uh, in this case, I've already stored the password as a variable. Um, so um, that is stored above, uh, up above there. Uh, but uh, you can put your password in as you need to. And so once we've got our um, our string together there for um, for our Azure connection. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and we'll create a uh, Azure connection. And uh, in order to do that, 
we will say CNN equals pio.connect, and then we'll put our CNN Azure connection string in there. And that'll use uh, pio.dbc to connect to Azure, uh, our Azure SQL database. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll put some feedback saying, we've opened our database and we're gonna create a store procedure now. And, uh, and then we can move on uh, and create our store procedure. Now we're gonna need a cursor. Uh, so we'll use our cursor, we'll set that uh, CS is equal to uh, our connection.cursor. And, uh, and then we can use that for various uh, operations as we uh, go here. And I'll actually put a comment that we're gonna drop and create that procedure um, because we're, we're gonna drop it first if it exists just so that we can run this procedure over and over if we want because uh, we're gonna run it a few times. We're gonna first create a procedure and then see if it you know, uh, creates and then we're gonna test it out. Uh, but we don't wanna get an error each time that we try to create a procedure. So we're gonna create a drop statement uh, saying drop procedure if exists, uh, create person and then we'll use our cursor to execute that, and then uh, we'll go ahead and create our procedure. And I should draw your attention to the commit statement there that you're gonna put after each of these drop or create um, uh, statements that we're executing, uh, because not all environments are auto commit. Uh, much of the Microsoft environment um, is auto commit, so you don't really need to specify that you need to commit. Um, and uh, but in Python, uh, using Python and the uh, PyODBC, it does not auto commit. Uh, I think there's a setting that you can use to set auto commit, but out of the box it does not. And so you might run some statements and think that you actually created or inserted some records, and you'll be wondering why they didn't insert. And it's because you need to put that that uh, explicit commit after you run your SQL statement. Um, so. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we're creating our procedure here. So we're going to do create procedure, uh, create person, and then I'm going to have some arguments uh, with some variables there that you see. Uh, so last name, first name, um, and I'm going to create a date of birth. Uh, I think that's, and then there's uh, one more, I think it's life story. So we'll create, uh, you know, just this is sort of a sample database. Um, so you can see that you can specify the argument and the data types for each of the arguments. And in this case, we're gonna use uh, NVAR cars uh, for most of them, and then we've got a date time uh, argument there as well. And then uh, we'll say as, just as if you were creating this in, you know, uh, you know SQL Server Management Studio, um, you can, you know, create your SQL string um, for the create procedure. Uh, and uh, you can insert into person, last name, first name, date of birth, and life story, and, uh, and, and then values, and then the values of our, uh, of our arguments. And so as you might have guessed, the, the arguments are the values that go into the table. Um, so our store procedure is gonna make it easy, uh, make it easy for us to do an insert statement uh, in this case, a standardized way of doing it, which is the nice thing about store procedures. And uh, so we're going to insert those values uh, and then we'll complete our statement with a semicolon. And of course, because it's a procedure, we can have more than one statement. And in this case, we're going to select the scope identity as ID. And what that does is it, it basically uh, gets the last identity value. So you can see we're doing an insert into the person table. And that person table actually has a person ID, which is an integer as the key, a synthetic key. And, uh, but it's, it's an identity column and so it's auto-generated. So it, it's like an auto number uh, that you might see in Microsoft Access. And so um, uh, it's something to be aware of and it's something you can grab when you're programming against SQL Server, it's nice to be able to get that new ID number when you've, when you've inserted that record and you wanna get that ID number back to do something else with it and that's what we're gonna get there. You know, you might need that ID to, uh, to create some records in, about something else in another table about that person, that new person. And so uh, we'll do a, a cursor.execute 
and then we'll do a cursor.commit just like we mentioned up above there and uh, and then I'll, I'll print closing connection um, and just so that we've got a connection closing here um, and then we'll print done and uh, it's a good idea to put this in inside of a you know try accept block um, if if you want to it's good you can catch errors and then you can close the close the database I've, I've demonstrated that in some other videos today I'm just wanting to demonstrate how to how to do the uh, create uh, procedure and uh, and the uh, execute procedure so I haven't included that um, so I hit F5 there look oh I broke it already need a need, need a closing quote on that one and uh, there we go okay so uh, it opened and uh, okay so it look, looks good it looks like it made it through there without any errors and uh, so you can see that now we've got a, a procedure in our database um, that we can create uh, a new person record with and so we can demonstrate that now I can rerun it again if I hit F5 uh, like I like I did there so you can see because I've done that drop procedure uh, for create person it's going to allow me to drop that so I can create it again. And that's really handy because uh, if you want to do some more uh, coding after, like we're going to here, uh, because we're actually going to execute our new procedure. Um, so I'm going to print entering some data uh, into our um, system here. And, uh, and then I'll do uh, SQL is equal to uh, exec. So when you're executing a store procedure, you use the uh, exec or execute, uh, create person, and then your arguments are, are you sort of follow that. So we'll just do exec, create person, and then I'll create uh, Macduff Henry with a birthday in, say, 1955. And uh, we'll, we'll um, you know, he's a great chap, so <laughs> we'll say he's a great chap something like that for his life story uh, and just as an example and then we'll close off with our semicolon and uh, double quotes on the end so that's our SQL string uh, so now we can uh, execute that uh, but first what I'm going to do is um, now sometimes uh, you'll find that these will not work and uh, in this case because we're getting the uh, the return value of the of just the ID uh, you can set no count on and that's going to allow that to to process and give that value back um, so just be aware that sometimes you might need to set that um, and so we'll use our data frame our df is equal to pandas or pd dot read sql query and then we'll pass in our sql and our connection and uh, and then i'll go ahead and i'll print our data frame and uh, and see what we get out of that and as you can see there's our print statement our data frame and uh, we're going to uh, execute our create person uh, which is the procedure that we created up here um, and uh, and so that's gonna go ahead and cr basically insert that record and return that auto number or identity column value that was uh, created when we went in there and so uh, you can see that it got uh, ID 10 because uh, there's 10 there's currently 10 and if I pull this over I've got SQL Server Management Studio for that database open and if I right click on say select top 1000 oh you can see it's not there there's three records in there but that record is missing and the reason is our commit we uh, we forgot our commit statement and uh, so it's important not to be afraid of commitment so make sure you get that commit statement in there. That's going to make your life a lot better. And so uh, if I do a cs.commit here, uh, you can see uh, now we've got our procedure. If I hit F5, now it's grabbed the next ID because the first one was not committed and the connection was closed, and so that record's lost. And now if I bring over my uh, query sheet and I refresh it, now you can see there's our new auto number ID, Henry McDuff. Uh, 1955 and uh, he got person ID 11 because uh, we've done some other work on that table that used up some of those auto number keys and that is how you can create store procedures on Azure SQL using Python 
Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to create store procedures on Azure SQL using Python. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.